So this is my new Colnago G3X. Um, this was a really fun collaboration with them designing um, you know all the color palettes and, and actually coming up with this is the, the color for my first bike for the season. We're going to be mixing it up throughout the year but this is the first one. Why well, I could. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so that's the intro's over. We're going to be uh, talking a little bit more and we won't be so manic now because we're riding bikes. It's happened. Oh, I don't know if this will be the intro or another thing will be the intro, but that's Nathan. And we had a plan and it was a very loose plan. It was like, let's go for a ride and that's what we're doing. But then he started getting a bit more meticulous and he's planned it. He's made a plan from the plan. And we're going to see Canberra, Nathan Haas style. Haas or Haas? Actually it's Haas, but we're in Australia so we'll code switch and just say Haas or Haas. So I'm, you'll hear throughout the course of the day me changing accent. It'll be Haas sometimes and then it'll be f f Nathan and then it'll be Haas. <laughs> And he's going to tell us about the route that he's planned when we stop. Is that right? Yeah. Sure, I mean, we can even just stop here because this seems like an apt place to stand in front of Parliament House. And I don't think there's too many places in the world left. Going right, actually. <laughs> I meant too many places left in the world. Right. Where you can actually ride right up to the door of Parliament House. It's kind of cool. I'm a Canberra native, still quite proud of coming from this place. And for me, it's a cycling mecca. And today, I'm going to show everyone just how good the gravel riding is. But more than that, show everyone how amazing the gravel riding is without ever being more than like five to 10 minutes away from a cafe. So <laughs> that's the point of today. Hey guys. Alright, ta-da! It's a good looking bike, there you go. You like the main hash down the floor? little pause, little drink stop, and taking the view. Not bad, eh? And uh, Nathan's just gonna talk about his bike because I'm learning. I'm learning a hell of a lot today. Talk to me. Every day's a school day, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you've, you've not done much gravel, have you? This is your first, first, time. first time ever, so. Well, for the record, Rob's actually holding himself pretty well because we've thrown down some pretty sketchy downhills. And I, a couple of times I was looking back to be like, shit, did he make that? And he just straight through it. So we're all good. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, gravel bikes are, you know, they're, they're exploding in the world. And I'm super lucky to have all these great partners for next year in my new endeavor to try to race gravel the best I can. So this is my new Colnago G3X. Um, this was a really fun collaboration with them designing um, you know, all the color palettes and, and actually coming up with this is the, the color for my first bike for the season. We're going to be mixing it up throughout the year, but this is the first one. And uh, I think it's really beautiful and I like this little and has logo on the front. I think that's a fun little touch. But um, yeah, my other partners are Campagnolo, so we've got the Eckar system, which for me, I, I know it's obviously going to sound biased, but I, I think it's the best gravel group set kicking around at the moment. And you know, I've got a 42.9 cassette on the back 13 speed, so I think that's a, a pretty neat piece of tech right now in the gravel world. And the, the clutch system is so amazing, there's so much tension that the, the chain just never comes off the single chain ring. And I was always nervous to, to try it, but. Um, 
Yeah, you can't move this thing. It's <laughs> yeah, right. solid as a rock. And uh, the Eckhart brakes, I think, you know, as soon as someone's used Campagnolo brakes, either on the, on the gravel or on the road, there's nothing like it. The tech is just insane. Um, I'm really also just loving these Campag uh, Shamal carbon gravel wheels. And uh, it's built on with my Vittoria Terreno dry tires with the gum wall, but inside I've got the, um, the tire liner. So it's basically like a big foam liner that sits inside the top of the rim. And it just means that I can run the tires much lower. And then if I actually rim out, the rim has no risk of actually getting a big impact because that's taking the that's taking the brunt of the impact. So the bike feels so much more like a um, a bike that's set up with 44 tires now or something a little bit bigger. Whereas today I'm using 38s and I just feel no drop in performance whatsoever. As you can see, I'm still working on the sort of stack height for my bike at the moment. The, the golden rule is you can always cut more, but you can't cut less. So um, I'm just sort of still working on my position. It's still sort of first week of riding the bike, but I was speaking with Rob about how, you know, a, a kind of a golden rule I use for setting up a gravel bike is I bring my saddle, you know, five mil to a centimeter lower and my saddle actually comes further back. Because when you're climbing, you really want to have the full part of the seat to actually really like put the force down onto the rear wheel. Um, I'm also trying a new saddle. This is the this is the 3D printed Physique versus Evo Adaptive, and you can see the sort of like cool honeycomb design. And I have to say, so far it's it's fantastic. Um, so that's set up to be really far back on the rails, and then I bring my stem a little bit shorter, uh, and. I bring the entire setup of the bike up about a centimeter from my road position. At the moment I'm a centimeter and a half higher um, because I think this bike compared to my other bike has a slightly smaller head tube so we're just working at the moment on the position for the bike on the whole but um, I'm really loving it. It's been, it's been more than fun whipping this thing out and going crazy. Gravel is really still undefined at the moment and like if you look at the races in America you could do it on a road bike with chunkier tires and I think that's something I'm considering doing this year. You know the Colnago bikes have a super big clearance and you know we're talking with the, the R&D guys at the moment about how the geometry is also super set up to be a perfectly good gravel bike if you don't have anything technical. So in America you've got these big smooth roads where it's just all fire road the whole day whereas if I go to say the migration race in Kenya or to the Iceland Rift all of a sudden you're starting to talk about, you know, way more leaning towards the kind of side where it's mountain biking on a road bike. And um, that's where you have to sort of make your considerations and changes to set up depending on what you're doing. So um, gravel racing, is, there's a full gamut from, you know, super smooth to almost, almost mountain biking, what we sort of did in the, you know, early 2000s when suspension really didn't even work. Um, so yeah, gravel gravel's anything that you want it to be really, and you don't have to have a gravel bike to ride off-road, but I find that having one just makes it a lot more fun and and also takes away the need to do certain crazy things on a mountain bike, because mountain bikes are just so good now at taking up all the slack and lack of skills, so to speak, that you can get yourself into some like seriously dangerous situations. So if you crash on a mountain bike now, it's going to be really bad. Whereas on a gravel bike, I feel like I still get that adrenaline kick without needing to put myself in a situation that's like absurd. <laughs> that's a great overview, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's really good. I hope there wasn't too much muesli bar on my teeth. <laughs> Thank you.